my fellow gnomes, and welcome to a brand new tutorial series. If you've been around on Roblox recently, you're probably aware of this game called Doors. If you've not seen it, it's a survival horror game involving, you guessed it, doors, which each connect to a series of randomly generated rooms. This random generation makes some pretty fun replayability, as you're never quite sure when those pesky monsters will appear and what's going to be on the other side of that next door. So in this series, we're going to be making our own version of the game. Now, as with most of my game tutorial series, you will need an intermediate level of scripting knowledge to get the most out of this. So I always recommend that anyone checks out my beginner series so they can familiarize themselves with some of the basics like variables, loops, events, and functions to ensure you're all up to speed. But with all that out of the way, Let's get creating. So here we are in a brand new base plate. Now your Roblox Studio might look a little bit different to mine as I know that Roblox are changing a lot of the icons at the moment. So some of these might look a little bit different, but I want to make sure that you have the same windows open as me. So if you go to the view tab and make sure that you have the Explorer property and output window all visible. These are going to be very important. We'll be using all of these. But with that out of the way, we can go and start creating our room generation. So we're going to just add in a part and we'll make it nice and uh, big. I don't know, something like this is fine. And then we'll create some walls around on each side. So we can make these uh, two studs wide, maybe. And maybe, maybe 12 studs high, something like that. And then we're going to create a entrance way on the end of it. And then we're going to create a little doorway and it doesn't matter too much how large you make this but I'm going to keep mine at uh, six studs wide and eight studs high. You can make yours whatever size you want but keep a note of it because we've got to make all of these the same size. So I'll resize this like so and then I'll add a little bit over the top and then for that entrance I'm going to make that 0.5 transparency and I'm going to name the part exit because that's going to be our exit doorway. And then we're going to create, uh, we're going to duplicate this exit part and move it all the way over so that it overhangs exactly two studs over the other edge. I'm going to name it entrance. Now at the moment I've got it uh, clipped the increments of one stud. So as I move, I can only move it one stud at a time. If you haven't got this enabled, go to the model tab and where it says move, you want this to be ticked and you can type in any number, but type in one stud, which makes it really easy with these precise increments. So we've got this exactly over the edge and this one exactly on the part. They're both the same size and they're both facing the same way. If you're not sure, we can click show orientation indicator and then we can see that it's front of it is facing to the left here. So it's facing that way. And this one is facing the same way as well. It doesn't matter which way they face, we've got to make sure they face the same way. So once we've done all of that, we're going to select them all, group it all together. And then we'll just name this one build. And in fact, let's grab the entrance and exit, move them out of that, move them back into the workspace. And then we'll group both of this together. And so we'll name this uh, small room. So we've got one model containing the entrance and exit, and then all the rest of the walls and stuff in a separate model. Now, don't worry about making anything too detailed for at the moment. We're just doing a quick, simple one to get started. But we'll make sure that the whole thing is anchored. And we want our entrance and exit part. So we'll select them both. And we want to make sure that can collide, can query, and can touch are all disabled. We don't need any of these. Just need to make sure everything's anchored. So what we're going to do now we've created this room is we're going to want to chain them together. And we're going to use these entrance and exit parts to help line them up. So what we'll be doing in our script is we'll be cloning this room. And we're going to make sure that the entrance part is in the exact same spot as the exit part. So it'll be lined up like so and we're going to create a chain of them like this one after the other so let's head into our script before we do we'll add in two new folders into the workspace we'll add one folder just called 
rooms. We'll move the small room into that and we'll have another folder which we'll call generated rooms, which we'll be putting the rooms that we generate into. Um, but just so we've got a bit of variation, we'll just copy the small room and we'll just make a room that's a bit longer. So let's extend this by, say, a few more studs. And then we'll move the doorway along and we'll move the, the walls along as well. Now, if we want, we could add in a roof too. So we could we clone this, control D, and move it up so we've got a roof for both of them. Now you'll notice we've only got the, the walls on one end. We don't want it on the other end because that's where our walls are going to be lining up with. Because these walls are going to line up. And so we won't actually need a wall on both ends. So now that we've got two rooms, one's called small room and the other one we'll just call long room. We're now going to go to server script service and we're going to add in a script. And then inside of that script, we're going to add in a module script. Now the script will just name server and the module script will name room. And so then in here, in our room, we'll uh, make sure we name the thing room. And I'll zoom in a bit so that's nice and easy for you to see. And we're going to create a function called room dot generate and that's going to have one parameter which is the previous room because we need to know the room that came before it in order so we can make that chain to connect them all together and so we'll first off we're going to get a random room we've only got two rooms but we'll choose a random one from between them both we'll improve this a little bit later um, but for now we'll just get a table of all the possible rooms it could be. So we get to this folder and get all the children. That will be workspace dot rooms get children. And then the random room, well, that's going to be one of the possible rooms and we want to get a, a number. So we need a random number. And to do that, I'm going to create a new random object. So we'll say room dot random equals random dot new. So then we can use this new random object we've created, room.random, and we'll use the function next integer. And we want a number between one and the total amount of items in the folder. So that'll be hashtag possible rooms. I mean, in this case, we only want one between one and two, but obviously we could add a lot more rooms. And so then once we've got our random room, we can say local new room equals random room, and we're just going to clone it. Now we've got the new copy, we need to position it into place. So we'll say new room dot, and we need to set a primary part for it. We could set this just in the explore window and set the property, but we can just do this from the script as well. And the primary part is going to be new room dot entrance and then we want to move it into position so new room and we're going to use the function pivot to if you've heard of set primary part c frame before it's basically the same thing as that but this pivot to is recommended for newer work and then where do we want to move it to we want to move it to the previous room exit dot c frame so we need to line the entrance up with the exit of the room before it and then once we positioned it, we need to add it into the world. So new room dot parent equals, and we'll use that folder we just created workspace dot generated rooms. And once we've created it, we're just going to return the new room we created back to whoever calls the function. So that's our room module script done for now. Let's head back into our server script and we'll access that module so local room equals and we use the require keyword script.room and then we're going to need to call that we can call that function now so room dot generate and of course we need that first parameter which is the previous room 
Now at the moment we haven't actually got a previous room, so we're going to need to create a start room for ourselves. So let's just duplicate this small room, we'll move it in through the workspace, and we'll just move it up into the sky a little bit. And we need a exit part, but we don't actually need an entrance part for the start room. So we can delete the entrance and these walls we can duplicate and move over just so it's all closed in and there's only one way out of it. We could even add in a spawn point for good measure. We'll add that in there too. Make that like so. There we go. And so we can put that in here and we'll name this from small room to start room. That's going to be directly inside the workspace, so it can't be duplicated by mistake. So back in our service script, we can then create a variable called our previous room, which will equal workspace dot start room. And then we're going to send the previous room to our room dot generate script. So once we've done that, if I go back and I click run, what should happen is a new room then appears right next to the start room. So I've got this one and I have got the small room. So I've generated one room. Now, obviously I want to generate a bit more than one room. So to generate multiple, I'm going to make use of something called a for loop. So for i equals one, it's going to be our starting number. And then we want a number to finish on. So I can type 10 to make 10 rooms do, and whenever's inside this loop will repeat. So what I'm going to do is call this function multiple times. But of course, if I did that and I just ran the game, well, I'm going to have 10 rooms all inside of each other right here, which is obviously not what I want to have them all inside of each other. I need to change the previous room each time. So we're going to set the previous room equal to whatever is returned to us by that function. So therefore, this value will keep changing. And as it changes, we can send the new change value to the next function each time we increment through the loop. And when we do that and we hit run, what we'll then get is 10 rooms all chained after each other. So we can see some of them are short rooms. And hopefully, yeah, here's a long room. Admittedly, it's a little bit hard to see with it all being gray. In fact, if we hit stop, and let's just change the, the color to be a little bit darker. And maybe we'll change the ceiling colors as well. Okay, there we go. So now if we hit, we can hit play, join with my character. And here we go, we're in the start room. We can head through into room one. We've got a long room. And then we've got a, another long room. And then by the looks of it, we've got a short room too. Now we've got these semi-translucent parts each time, which I probably don't really want. I could just go to the actual rooms themselves and set the transparency to one, but I might want to just keep an eye on where these are when I'm building. So it's probably easier to do it from the script. So if I go to the room module and just after I've set the position, I can say new room dot entrance dot transparency equals one and I can copy that line and do the same thing but for the exit and so when I play now it'll make them all nice and invisible well with the exception of the start room and it makes it look a little bit better now this is pretty basic rooms and they're not too exciting but we've got some very basic generation going on. Now in the future episodes, we'll be adding some more interesting rooms, some curves and bends, and we're going to improve our random generation as well. And obviously, eventually we need to add some doors in too, seeing as that is the namesake. But that's all for another video. So until then, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.